Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here once again with another preview. I always love to do these because it gives us a chance to take a look at a distribution that's a work in progress, something that's coming down the pipeline later on in the year, in this case in less than a month. It's always great and fun to see what's coming next. And this time around on this laptop right here, I have loaded Ubuntu 2004. It comes out in April, so really not that far from now. And I wanted to take a look at where the project is at this point in development, see whether or not it's stable. I don't really have any expectations. Just kind of get a look at what the next long-term support release from Ubuntu is going to look like. So let's go ahead and take a look. I have it already loaded and I'm gonna switch the camera over to this laptop right here. And we're going to dive into a preview of Ubuntu 2004. And here it is right here. This is a fresh installation of Ubuntu 20.04. I used a daily image. And like I mentioned before, this is a work in progress. So I need to give you guys the disclaimer that anything you see in this video can and probably will change. But I think that it's going to give us a general decent idea of what this is going to be like when it does release in April. Now there's a few things that I'm going to mention real quick. Now, normally everyone wants to know about the installation process. Has it changed? Well, not really all that much. I've noticed that there are some theming changes in the installer, but I mean, there's theming changes everywhere. The entire theme looks like it's been refined. There's some small changes here and there, but overall the installation process is exactly the same as before. You simply fill out the information that it asks you for, you click through the various screens, and that's pretty much about it. We also have a ZFS option here during installation, which I did go ahead and choose to go along with, but that's not new in this release. That was new in the previous release, I believe. So basically business as usual when it comes to the installer. So another thing I wanna to touch on real quick is printer support. Now I know printers are boring, I agree, but actually when the conversation around printing is boring, that's a good thing because that means there weren't any problems. Actually, in my case, my brother printer was set up as soon as I connected to Wi-Fi, which, you know, shouldn't be a surprise to me at this point because it's been working for a few releases now. But there's just something about getting that message on the screen that says your printer's set up and you didn't even have to click on anything that I don't think Ubuntu gets enough credit for because that's just awesome. And for me, the brother printer that I have has been a pain in the past to set up on Linux, but definitely not in this release. It's pretty much automatic. And speaking of which, I'll go ahead and open up uh, settings. I should be able to get to printers right from the menu, and here it is. And here's my brother printer right here, all set up and ready to go. Again, I didn't have to do anything to set this up. It just magically appeared as soon as I connected to Wi-Fi. How awesome is that? I feel like anything that a distribution can do to make something easier for the user is just awesome and I don't really feel like Linux gets enough credit for things like this, things that just work. And having this printer set up is just one less thing that I have to contend with after a fresh install, so much appreciated. Now moving on from there, here we have the default Ubuntu 20.04 desktop as it is in a work in progress state as of March 17th. And I have to say, the theme refinements are something that I definitely notice. The icons are, you know, they're, they're just more professional. I don't know how else to say it. They look great, the icon theme. So if I open up the file manager here, you can see that we have a different, uh, we have a completely different icon set for folders. So I could see that definitely a lot of work has gone into this. And I'm one of those people that prefer a vanilla unchanged GNOME desktop when I use GNOME. And, you know, the thing is, the GNOME theme has never been that great. The GNOME developers have put a lot of work into their theme, but I don't really feel like they've ever gone to a point where I can accuse GNOME of having a professional theme. But Ubuntu definitely does. And, you know, I might have some other preferences when it comes to the color themes or color schemes. But as you can see here, I think it looks great. I think that they've done a lot of great work in making GNOME look modern and actually professional. And that's not just here on the desktop. I mean, even the boot splash as you start your computer, 
is just so much more cleaner. It's simpler and I like that. It's just not in your face because let's face it, booting is something you really should only have to do once because if you set up live patch, which is a feature here, you really shouldn't need to restart your computer all that often and it shouldn't be something that you see all that much. But when you do see it, I think it does look professional. It has a little spinny icon on the screen and then the Ubuntu logo on the bottom. So they keep it very simple and effective. And you know what? I think it looks decent. Now, in my case, I decided to go with ZFS. Now, I love ZFS. I think it's a great file system. I use it on my free NAS and I've used it on other installations as well. It's a great technology and I think probably the best technology we have when it comes to file systems. And I'm not just talking about Linux, I mean industry-wide. And ZFS isn't even really a Linux thing. I'm not going to get into that, but it is featured here in Ubuntu 20.04. It's not the first time, but they have made some refinements, especially in the way that updates are run. It'll actually do snapshots when you install updates, and snapshots are one of the greatest features of ZFS right up there with the data sets that ZFS also offers. Now those are changes behind the scenes, and it's still considered experimental when you go and choose that option. So I don't know if that experimental word will be lifted when 2004 goes final. But as of the time I'm recording this video, ZFS support is considered experimental. I will have a full review of Ubuntu 20.04 when it actually becomes the final version, but until then, um, proceed with caution, which you should do anyway because this is not a final product. Now, speaking of ZFS, I'm curious if I just open up a system monitor here. I can't believe that I haven't thought to do this yet. So here is the system monitor with basically nothing running. I have an empty desktop. I don't even have Firefox running. So let's see what kind of resource usage we have here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is an older machine. Um, this is probably like three pushing four years old or something like that. So I'm not using a state-of-the-art fast machine. It was probably really great when it came out, but, you know, it's uh, kind of long in the tooth here. And right now we can see 1.9 gigabytes or so is being used of the around 8 gigabytes that I have on this machine. Some memory is reserved and this is being measured in Gibby bytes, but basically we could see that 24% of the memory is used right now. Now if I go to the process list and then I just sort by memory usage, we could see here that there's, re there's really not anything that's blowing up when it comes to memory usage. So, you know, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm pretty sure this is not here going to add up to 24% of the memory. And that's something with ZFS because ZFS does use more RAM, which is one of the factors you want to think about when you go to adopt it. Now, it's been said that it's recommended to have one gigabyte of RAM for every one terabyte of storage. Now, there's been some debate about that, whether or not that's still true today. But just keep in mind, there's going to be additional memory overhead. So on a machine like this one that only has 8 gigs of RAM, it probably wasn't a good idea to go with ZFS. But I wanted to do that to get a feel for it. And I think that the features of ZFS are really awesome and worth taking advantage of if you do have the extra RAM available. But if you are, you know, using a low RAM machine, then you might want to you know, basically not consider it. And even then, I mean, if it's considered experimental when this comes out, you probably should still kind of think twice about it just in case there's some um, bugs or anything like that. But you get the idea. ZFS is a great technology, but its implementation in Linux is a work in progress. So other than that, Everything here is pretty much your uh, standard Ubuntu desktop. We have our panel here on the left, which a lot of people really enjoy. I personally don't enjoy having a panel. I don't really feel like I need it, but for those of you out there that do like to have a panel, it's here. You can easily turn it off if it's not something that you want to have on your desktop. And then for the default applications, we can see the usual suspects here. Of course, we have Firefox which is now changing every month. So by the time this comes out in its final form, we'll already have a new Firefox release. And as of today, I've installed all of the updates. We are on Firefox 74. So I predict 75 will likely be out by the time that Ubuntu 20.04 is out. 
Firefox does move pretty quickly. And I think that's great because, you know, you always have new features to look forward to. But Firefox is a great browser. I'm glad to see it's continued to be offered as a default in Ubuntu. Then, of course, we have Thunderbird, which is the default email client. It's also the email client that I like to use as well. So, again, one less thing for me to install. And if you've seen Thunderbird in the past, I mean, you know what to expect. So I'm not going to go into too much detail there. And then we have some other choices here. For example, we have Rhythmbox, which is a pretty awesome music player for playing your music collection. You know, it is kind of interesting that Rhythmbox is still offered on the default image, considering almost everybody has moved to streaming media. Well, pretty much everybody but me, I have an MP3 collection. Actually, everything's in pretty much all AUG format. But I still enjoy having physical CDs and ripping. I don't really feel like I'm sold on streaming media all that much, but it seems like that's where the majority is going. So I really do like the fact that this is offered here by default. I just think it's kind of interesting considering I think that the use case is kind of uh, much lower nowadays than it used to be. But if you want an application to manage your music collection and play your tunes, well, this is definitely a good one for that. And of course, we have LibreOffice, as we have in every single Ubuntu release for as long as I can remember. And currently, we are up to version 6.4. Now, in my case, I always uninstall LibreOffice on Ubuntu or any other distribution for that matter. And I'll just use the app image version because I want to have the latest version of LibreOffice. And that's one downside of Ubuntu is that they will never upgrade this. You will never get a new version. You might get security updates unless they've changed something and put in an exception. You generally don't get new versions of LibreOffice. You're stuck on whatever it came with. Uh, not counting security updates though. However, I do understand that a lot of people really don't care about having the latest and greatest LibreOffice. And who knows, maybe in Ubuntu 20.04, they will keep the version updated to the latest and greatest. And I know that not everybody cares about having the latest and greatest version of the Office suite. But the reason why I think that it actually does matter is because with every version of LibreOffice, they improve compatibility with Microsoft Office formats and I think that their support of those formats is actually really good, but there's a few rough edges. And I think that that's the biggest weakness of LibreOffice. So I really hope that Ubuntu 20.04 does give everyone the latest and greatest LibreOffice as soon as it becomes available. But even if they don't, there's always the app image, so I guess it really doesn't matter. In addition to that, Something else I want to point out is this right here where it says additional drivers. And there shouldn't be anything listed for this particular laptop. I mean, it does have the um, Intel wireless card here. But basically, the reason why I brought this up is because, you know, video drivers, uh, especially NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA users need a proprietary driver to play games. It's just reality. It's just life. The open source driver is pretty good, but it's not there yet. Now, this to me looks pretty much exactly the same as it did in the previous release. There have been some mock-ups surfacing online where the Ubuntu developers are looking into changing this and making it a better experience. So I can't really speak to that yet because at this point in development, that's not here yet. But if you do have, for example, an NVIDIA video card, then you'll be able to go to this application right here. I just simply open up the activities overview and then I just search for drivers and it you know comes up. Then you'll be able to use this to get your NVIDIA driver installed, which is pretty important if you plan on playing games via Steam or something like that. So I really do hope they change this. I think it's kind of um, long in the tooth, but uh, there have been some mock-ups, so maybe they will actually get this changed by final release. But even if they don't, it does the job. Now, I'm not going to go over every application here. I'll do this in more detail in the final review, but there's a few things here I see that I wanna talk about. Now, first of all, here's Remina. I'm gonna bring that up here. Now, this is an interesting inclusion by default. Now, there is a minimal option you can choose when you install Ubuntu. So I chose to just, you know, basically not do minimal. I wanted the full experience just to see what they're including. 
And Remina is a very interesting inclusion. It's my remote desktop client of choice. If I am, you know, for example, trying to connect to a Windows machine for some reason via RDP, then this is the application that I would use for that and the one that I would recommend others use as well. And it's included here by default, which I think is actually pretty interesting. And I think that it does fit in with Ubuntu. I mean, Ubuntu is a general purpose distribution, but I do feel like they cater more to the developer community and also sysadmins and people that use their tools professionally. And I think for that reason, this actually does fit in pretty well with Ubuntu because it does give everyone a uh, tool to use to connect to other remote desktops. And it's not just RDP. I mean, there's other things here. For example, we have VNC and SSH as well. So you could add all of your connections to this one application, which I think is actually pretty cool. And again, it fits in with the um, intended audience, I think, pretty nicely. Now, in addition to that, I noticed the Snap Store right here. Now, I've never seen this before, so I'm clicking on this for the very first time. I didn't even notice this yesterday when I first started checking this out. And, you know, I'm going to save my final opinion for the review, obviously, but it looks like GNOME software to me. And I know that there are a lot of Snap packages. Snap packages are a universal package format. I actually love it. I think that it's definitely necessary in today's day and age to have a universal package format, and Snap is a great format for that. But I have to imagine that not all of these are Snap. So if I was to click on games, for example, let's see what's here. And it's not refreshing for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But anyway, I get the impression that they are combining Snap packages with GNOME software to come up with the Snap Store. And I'll see if I'm right in the final review. Between now and then, I will be checking this out to get a better feel for what this is and how it works. But I think that this is potentially a big win for users because Snap packages could very well give everyone newer versions of LibreOffice and allow users to have newer versions of any application that supports Snap packages. And if so, I think that's a big win. I think that's really going to bridge the gap between a stable base but new applications when desired. So I don't want to make this video very long because, you know, it's a work in progress. Like I mentioned, Ubuntu 20.04 comes out next month. And so far, I'm very excited for it because it seems like a very solid release. I did run into a few rough edges. For example, I couldn't get an external GPU to work on this release, although it did work on previous ones. And I did run into that issue where the Snap Store didn't refresh. So of course, you know, there's going to be some rough edges, but I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. It's been very solid. So if this is where it is, you know, a month up to the release, I really do think that we're in a good state because, you know, from here on out, it's just about fixing bugs and getting it stabilized so it's ready for release in April. And I think they're in a good state already, you know, more than a month before the final version comes out. So I think that's a good sign. Ubuntu 20.04, it might be amazing. So when it does come out and it does reach final, I'll have a review right here on my channel. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again as soon as I have that review finished.